Hey guys, Matt here. This is my review of X-Men First Class. Now this film was directed by Matthew Vaughn, who previously brought us the movie Kick-Ass, and this movie stars Michael Fassbender, James McAvoy, and Kevin Bacon, with Rose Byrne, January Jones, Jennifer Lawrence, and a whole slew of other actors to play minor roles. When I originally heard they were making a movie called X-Men First Class, I got excited. I got really excited because I wanted to see a movie that featured all of the characters from the original X-Men franchise just younger. I wanted to see how Charles Xavier founded his X-Men team as well as his school. But then we got to see more photos of the cast and crew, and we got to see a trailer finally, and then my excitement turned into worry because... <laughs> The first class of mutants featured in this movie was not the actual first class in the comics. Now, you can go into this movie with one of two mindsets. You can either say to yourself, okay, this is going to be an action movie, it's going to be just a popcorn flick, a summer movie blockbuster, and I'm going to go see it regardless of who's in it, who's not in it, what's it about, what it's not about, how canon it is, regardless. Or, you can go in with the mindset that I tried to not go into with, and that's, okay, they kind of messed up the franchise with the characters and the continuity, X-Men Origins Wolverine got mixed reviews, this movie might be bad, but because it's X-Men, and it's my favorite group in the Marvel Universe, I'm going to go check it out. Something this movie did really, really well, which is what surprised me, is exactly what X-Men Origins Wolverine, as well as the franchise, didn't do quite well, but The Dark Knight, which is what this movie is actually compared to uh, quite a bit, did do, and that was character development. And they had emotional storylines and backstory that would help you uh, relate to the characters. You know, it wasn't just a bunch of faces from the Marvel Universe or other X-Men or mutants crammed into a movie just so it would have, you know, name value in there. No, you had storylines that involved Professor X, Mystique, Sebastian Shaw, and Magneto. All well, well acted by James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, Jennifer Lawrence, and Kevin Bacon perfectly. Because each of these characters affected one another. And in turn, they, because of how they treated each other, how they acted towards each other. Everything they did molded them and formed them into the characters that we see in uh, the franchise that comes later. And James McAvoy's Professor X, for what he was given, for how old he was supposed to be in the movie, great performance. I do think Michael Fassbender's uh, portrayal as uh, Magneto was, was better just because he was like James Bond. He, he was just, every time it showed him on screen, you were thinking to yourself, okay, this guy's out for vengeance, and you know something's about to go down. And when it did, it was that much better. It was just like seeing the Joker in The Dark Knight, because you knew every time it showed him, something awesome was going to happen. And every time it showed uh, Michael Fassbender, it did. And then you get Sebastian Shaw, plays the villain, and uh, though he may not look the part as in the comics, Kevin Bacon, you still got it, and you played the villain perfectly. Just as good as any villain in history, you rank up there. Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique, who played the childhood best friend of Charles Xavier, who eventually becomes a villain. Really good job. I like the emotion that she showed, the personality she showed, and the connection between Charles Xavier and uh, Eric Lencher that we didn't get to see, really, in the franchise have to point out Nicholas Holt's portrayal as Hank McCoy, a.k.a. Beast, because his role in this movie, to me, embodied what I liked about the film the most, and that was you don't have to have the biggest, strongest, coolest-looking character in an X-Men film, let alone an action film in general, to be liked. His role showed that you've got to have personality, and you have to develop your character, and then you can give them, you know, awesome abilities or a cool persona. And it was neat because they showed him more as a person first, and then they showed us what his abilities or what his mutant appearance looked like. And it just made, to me, 
his role that more special, as well as the other characters. Now, if I had to rate this movie from a 1 to a 5, I would give it a 4, for two reasons. One, this movie really should have been split into two parts. I mean, the original trilogy was split into three movies, and the events of those movies only took place over a couple months, and the historic friendship of Professor X and Magneto really should have been based on years and years of friendship, and not just a couple days, which is what this movie displays. They try to take the origins and the journey and even the end of a friendship of two men and they try to cram it into a short timeline. Now, this is a lot like if Kill Bills 1 and 2 were crammed into one movie. It would have just been rushed and the story wouldn't have been as developed. So to me, they should have split it into two movies. Harry Potter's doing it. Twilight's doing it. Kill Bill did it. Why can't the X-Men? Give us another trilogy.